गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू आई प्रोफेसर जगदीश प्रसाद एज प्रोफेसर एरा उपाध्याय टोल्ड यू दैट आई एम ए प्रोफेसर ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड लुकिंग आफ्टर अमेटी स्कूल ऑफ अप्लाइड साइंसेज सो आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड डेलीगेट्स फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड अब्रॉड हु हैव ज्वाइंड and attending this two days international conference on global entrepreneurship trends and em empowerment through innovation that is icge tei 2021 on virtual mode i also welcome our pro vice chancellor uh, professor amit jain uh, provost and dean academics professor aseri all deans directors hoi organizing chair of the conference dr manju kosik members of organizing committee of this conference uh yes friends uh, it is a two day international conference so today is the second day of the conference in which we are going to start two days first session in which keynote address will be delivered by professor walker shu so on behalf of our vice chancellor uh, our chancellor dr ashim chohan our pro vice chancellor dr amit jain and organizers of the conference i heartily welcome professor walker shu in the conference and also thankful for accepting our invitation to deliver a keynote address on using internet of things for agricultural water management under changing climate so uh, as dr era upadhyay uh given me the responsibility to introduce uh professor sui so it's my privilege to introduce professor su uh yes professor su is a principal researcher at agriculture research council pretoria south africa she has worked as a professor emeritus in agriculture meteorology at the university of free state south africa she has also worked as an honorary professor in the school of biosciences at the university of nottingham malaysia she has completed her phd in plant physiology from university of california usa yes uh, under her guidance more than 20 phd students have completed their research work yes friends she has published more than 160 research papers and research reports whose citations are approximately more than 3000 so it's a wonderful achievement she was awarded a full bright scholarship for her phd in plant physiology at the university of california usa uh she has also completed her diploma in project management she is also member of international commission for irrigation and drainage she is a fellow of south africa south african society of crop production she is a rated scientist means she has been rewarded as a rated scientist with south african national research foundation professor shu was a project leader of rain for africa 
funded by Netherlands Space Office and Climate. I want to bring to your kind notice that really she is an innovative researcher. What she has innovated, I am giving a simple uh, one example. She has developed a mobile app called AgriCloud, which is very, very important for uh, every farmer. So to make the agricultural added value for weather development, weather dependent decisions available to the extension practitioners and to farmers on a daily basis. So this is very, very important app she has developed with the help of IoT, I think so. She is a recipient of Bram Fisher Oxford South Africa Award from Oxford University, UK London in 2000. Her field of specialization or expertise area are environment, water resource management, agriculture, crop production, crop science, sustainable agriculture, climate change and agriculture, climate change application and soil. So friends, we should feel proud that we have a keynote speaker who has many talented area of expertise and she has done a good research as well as innovative work in her life. So a clapping for her contribution in the field of agriculture. Now, I request to Professor Shu to deliver your talk and then uh, uh, our researcher, our delegates, our participants will be benefited. Now I invite uh, Professor Shu. Over to you, Professor Shu. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me and can you see my screen? So my topic is on um, using the Internet of Things for uh, precision irrigation and uh, changing climate. Well, as we know, um, we're expecting uh, higher temperatures and less rainfall. So that's why it's important for us to be able to do this. If we look at many of the farmers around the world, they are producing crops under semi-arid conditions and they're using um, irrigation for this. We also know that because of global warming, it's not only that the temperature is going to increase, but also that the evapotranspiration will be increasing. And so that means that we need to be able to add more water to the crops. We've been using um, our agricultural science research results to be able to formulate some technical messages for the farmers. But many times it's very difficult to deliver those messages. And as you heard in my introduction, I have been making uh, some apps to be able to help with that. But because we need to use information from the field for irrigation, it is a much more difficult task. So that's why we need to be able to use the Internet of Things as well. So I will bring some examples uh, today in the irrigation scheduling and using the climate information. If we uh, think about the irrigation, we know that it must be for a specific crop at a specific place. And we also know that we have to look at that farm management and know that we need to have a concept that's based on observing the field and seeing what is going on and then measuring and monitoring some of those things and responding to these crops and the way they're interacting. We call it response farming. And so when we're looking at precision agriculture, then we want to know what are the uses and specific placement for many of the inputs, nutrients, pesticides, seeds, and water, so that we can avoid, avoid environmental pollution. 
and we want to use them in a sparing and so strategic way from an economic point of view as well. This will help us to improve the productivity and resource efficiency and reduce our costs. And as I said, have minimal environmental impact. So if we look at the precision agriculture, we know that there's many new implements and we are, can, can use them for managing and monitoring the field in an accurate way. So if we look at the environmental aspects, which we're gonna concentrate on today, we want to look at the soil, we want to look at the weather and the long-term climate, also then the vegetation and the kind of water. And so these will all vary from place to place. And that is why it's important that we can deal with it at a site specific situation. And so for a farming enterprise to be successful, we really need to be able to manage and monitor these things and be able to then have a balance of what the monitoring and measurements tell us and what the requirements are for the crop and what the resources are, for instance, the water in our dams or in the underground water uh, balance. So if we think about uh, this, it really relies on specialized equipment, software and all sorts of IT. So for instance, if we have uh, a field, we know that across the field there's a lot of uh, natural soil variability. So we may be putting up our center pivot across the field, but we need to know precisely what kind of soils are at each place and if there are some problems so that we can adjust the irrigation accordingly. If we're looking at grazing, we would also know that we would be able to then adjust where the animals would be so that we would be able to have optimum production across the whole area. So if we look at um, what uh, we, we need over here, we need to be able to do some data collection. So sometimes this is background information. So we're characterizing the region or the farm. So for instance, we would do uh, a detailed soil survey every 100 meters across our area. And then we would also be able to have a yield map in the end. Once we've got that data collected, we need to go and do some calculations. And those calculations will help us uh, be, able to be able to interpret some of that information. And then that would help us to be able to send messages to uh, be able to pre-program our implements and be able to work at a small um, area and specific details for each one. Uh, what is happening now? Okay. Yeah, so in order to do this, we need to have a GPS and we need to have a global navigating systems. And uh, if we don't know what our Latin longitude are, we're not able to do this. So we need to be able to use the satellites. And usually we're using more than four satellites so that we can have high precision. And uh, we need to be sure that um, the obstacles of buildings and mountains are, are, are not reducing our signal so that we can have that GPS receiver and then the farmers would be able to enhance their operations with the location information and they will be able to use uh, the mapping of the field boundaries roads and irrigation systems and therefore be able to look at uh, controlling the weeds and diseases so what are the benefits of this it will help us to improve agricultural yield and also to uh, reduce the environmental risks so the benefits are that we can monitor the soil and the plant, and we can do this by placing uh, specific sens sensors around the field and looking at the plant. We can also obtain real-time data. So if there is a burst pipe or something, we would be able to see it immediately. And this information will then help us to make better management decisions. So what does this result in? It results in saving time and money, and especially this is on the high cost inputs like the fertilizer and the chemical applications. So this also then reduces uh, the pollution of the environment. It also provides a better farm records. And so from this, we would be able to really work out uh, the economic viability 
of each one of the operations. All of these then can be integrated into farm management system and uh, this will really help to improve the farm productivity. This farm management system would also, of course, include the labor uh, allocations, etc. And then we would be able to reduce um, the overlap of the spraying. And so for the farm farmers and the landowners and the farm managers, if they can use this technology in precision farming, then they will reap many benefits and they will be able to increase um, their profits. So if we look at what precision agriculture gives us, it gives us a farmer's ability to locate the precise place in his field. And recently we were looking at a field of barley and we can see that there's certain areas where there's water logging. And so we can be sure that we put different amount of irrigation there. This creates then the maps of the, the spatial variability across, across the field. And this will be related to the crop yield and also things like the um, soil organic matter and the moisture levels and nitrogen levels. And so we can apply then the water and the nutrients just exactly where they need it at the right time. But if we have to have to look at this, then we would also want to know about precision and accuracy. So the first thing is that we want us want our uh, monitoring to be accurate. So accuracy means that we're going to talk about the closeness of the measurements to a specific value. So we need to test the accuracy of our instruments and we need to calibrate them. If they're not calibrated, then they may be giving us uh, somewhat of a wrong reading. Then we also need to know about the precision. So precision means are they close to one another? And they may be close to one another, but they may also still be in inaccurate. So we need to know that we can test our instruments for both of these. So they may be uh, uh, inaccurate or they can be uh, accurate and precise. So if we look at what is irrigation, then we want to know that it's um, the application of water to be able to satisfy uh, the crop requirements. And so this is to keep the crops uh, hydrated to prevent water stress and to allow optimum growth and good um, production. There's many different ways of calculating it. We can use the supply from the soil or the supply from the atmosphere and we use a water balance just like the bank balance. So if you add water uh, it must be the same amount as the water that is lost. So the added water is the rain and irrigation and the lost water is the evaporation and transpiration. And then we have to also consider runoff and deep drainage. So if we're looking at the supply from the soil, um, it's important to have the background of the soil water holding capacity and the clay content and a number of other things. But it's then critical that we monitor the soil at uh, different depths, especially where the roots are. And so we would need to know what is the full profile or field capacity, we need to know uh, the permanent wilting point when the plants will, will die and so we can calculate that amount of plant available water. Then we can make some decisions about uh, when to irrigate and how much water to make to irrigate. We have to do these calculations before we can set up the census. We can also use uh, the atmosphere to be able to give us some information because this is the sucking potential or um, drying potential of the atmosphere. So we call this evapotranspiration. This is the demand of the atmosphere, taking the water from the soil, the plant, and being able to monitor this with the automatic weather station. So the automatic weather station will be monitoring on a five minute basis, the air temperature, the relative humidity, the wind and the solar radiation. And then we can do some real time calculations so that we know that the evaporation is higher on dry, hot days and cooler on wet, humid days. And then we can know how much water to apply so that we're applying what the plant has used. But we know that we also have a number of different types of irrigation systems. So if we think of the microjets and the drippers, then we know that they have a high efficiency with low losses. So we're using the water that we are putting onto the plant is readily available. If we go to sprinkler irrigation and 
center pivots, they have a medium efficiency, and we would also be able to use uh, the sensors to be able to monitor them. But if we come to flood and basin and furrow irrigation, it has the lowest efficiency. And so we know that we can't really use uh, the Internet of Things and uh, monitoring here because it cannot give a feedback to the water application system. So if we look at precision irrigation, then we know that there's some innovative uh, techniques here so that we can use the water wisely. As I said, we want to use the drip and micro irrigation uh, and the center pivots for this. So we would be able to save water. More importantly, we would be able to apply the water um, uniformly across the field, and this will give us consistent high yields. We would also be able to apply the herbicides and fertilizer um, through the systems, and this will be according to the crop needs. So we need to have a controlled um, automated system from the sensors in the soil and the, and the atmosphere to be able to give us feedback to our irrigation, um, um, uh, turning on our irrigation pipes, etc. So this is why we need the soil water content monitored at different depths and the, and the uh, climate variables as well. Then we use this program to calculate the crop water requirement and program that irrigation scheduling. So if we come to how is the Internet of Things important, it's important because it's a system or a network of interconnected and interrelated computer devices. So these can be mechanical devices or digital machines, and they can be uh, uh, related to objects or people or, or, or animals. So they provide uh, unique and special identifications, and they usually are embedded sensors, and then they go through to some software and work via the network connections. And so we need to have this uh, necessary electronics to be able to do this. And this will have to be able to be exchanging the data and transferring the data. And it needs to be in a responsive manner. So we need to have some critical decision points where the critical values are known. And this needs to be done uh, without any human to human or human to computer interactions. It must be automated. And so then we can use this to decide on which actions to perform and be able to then send alerts to the humans and to the sensors. So if we look at what do we need, we need to know uh, two things mainly about time and about the spatial requirements. And so we have to really establish what is the relationship between the weather parameters and those irrigation scheduling devices. And we need to be able to have a decision tree for those critical questions so that we can know which is the most critical question and then answer that one first. Because if we think about uh, Lieberg's law of limiting factors, we need to address the biggest, lowest hole so that we can block that before we can fill up the tank. So if we look at some of the instrumentation monitoring, um, then we need to know that uh, we can monitor the climate. So we use automatic weather stations for this, and each automatic weather station will have a number of um, uh, sensors. The temperature sensor uh, looking, usually using a thermistor. The humidity sensor is also using a thermistor, so it's very sensitive. We use, uh, for rainfall, we use a tipping bucket rain gauge, or we can also use um, a sensor that measures the, the rain onto a plate. We also then use uh, an anemometer for the wind speed and a wind vane. So these all help us to be able to calculate the amount of water that is needed and being used by the, by the crop. These um, uh, climate monitoring systems would then be linked through to a microcontroller and these would go then through to the valve and be able to be sent via um, the cell mobile um, uh, signal through to the computers. From the computer, it can be sent back to the client and to the 
instruments. Usually our power source is via a solar panel in the system. If we come to the soil, then we want to know that we can monitor our soil uh, probes and these soil probes, there's a number of different soil probes and we need to be able to monitor them at different depths so we know where the, the water is in the soil profile so that we can work out where the roots are extracting the water and we have a number of uh, both simple and um, uh, electronic uh, devices that are used in South Africa. We also can monitor the transpiration of the crop and so we have these uh, lysimeters that we where we would have uh, monitoring in the box of soil and we also have sap flow probes that can be mounted on a tree and then you can get the hourly values and feed that back to your irrigation system and so this would be the setup in the field you can see the center pivot with the um, the barley and the automatic weather stations and then we can get our uh, data coming through um, uh, to be able to control the irrigation. The other thing that we can use is uh, a drone to make spot measurements. And so here a drone with the special uh, thermal sensors and um, being able to then check the condition of the field and be able to monitor which parts of the field are doing well and which parts need attention. So this will help the manager to be able to go and walk in the field in the right place. And so all of these things must be connected wirelessly and they must be connected so that we can um, have a connection through uh, the internet and then back through to the sensors that are going to actually deliver uh, the water to the field. So if we think about what are the macro inputs that we can make, we can know that we can do that with fertilizer, pesticide, and the irrigation water. And this gives a high um, efficiency and it minimizes um, the over application. So we often talk about fertilizer micro dosing, and this is then applying small amounts of fertilizer. And even in the, um, small field scale we would be applying it by hand but we can know that this will help the rapid growth of the of the crops if we're looking at the um, precision irrigation we need to also be able to integrate it with our weather forecast and so we need to have the global input from the um, satellites and this will help us then to make a weather forecast and know whether it's going to rain in the next few days so we can plan our irrigation accordingly and this will then help us to schedule the amounts of all of those different inputs the fertilizer the irrigation and the herbicides and pesticides and so this all can be remotely controlled and automated but in order to do this, as I said, we need to have a GPS system on the tractor, on the center pivot, so that the, they actually know within two meters where they are in the latitude longitude grid. We also need to have a GIS system in place so that we can uh, consider all the data and relate the different parameters to each other. We also need to have a variable rate technology so that we would be able to control the irrigation um, sensors uh, so that they can deliver the right amount of water. We also need to look at the optical, op, optical satellite imagery and also from the drones. And so that's where we would be using the near infrared um, monitors for the status of the crop health. So this would be the whole picture where we would have our GIS with the different uh, soil levels and then monitoring all of the different um, implements onto the field. And so for instance, here are some of the satellite images of the center pivots and you can see uh, that the, the red uh, zones are showing a higher temperature and therefore some kind of stress in the field and also um, some areas where it has been well irrigated. So we can see that some of these uh, situations are monitored like this and it may be because of some differences in the soil 
uh, characteristics or it can be differences in the uh, crop that is planted. And then we use the information across the whole of South Africa as well. So all of this using the uh, weather forecast and the rain gauges, using the radar, using satellite and using the forecast can then help us come down to be able to uh, get some useful information. And so if we think about the irrigation, we're looking at the amount of water, we're using the weather data to calculate that evapotranspiration. Then we monitor it in the soil to see how much has been added and whether it is sufficient. And then we use the remote sensing to be able to look together with the crop model and calculate the crop growth and the different health stages. And then this is updated and then uh, sending messages back to the farmers. Of course, the fertilizer can also be calculated from the original soil uh, um, analysis and then monitoring how much has been added. And so if we look at how the system can work, we need to be able to cooperate with a number of partners. We have to have the farmers and the farmers groups, the co-ops and extension. These are considered our end users. And we have the crop model at um, uh, a farm and a village or location level. And then we would come in and collect the local knowledge and some expert analysis. And then this would always be feeding into the data processing and, and modeling. And then we need to have these interfaces that would be the apps and the media to be able to deliver the right messages at the right time. And so if we think about uh, the tractors, we know that we have to have um, some smart feed from the GIS and from the VRTs to be able to link the tractors and the amount that will be applied. If we look at the uh, development with the robots right now, then they have a, a photo sensor so that they can search out the weeds and actually pluck them out. Well, in South Africa, we're probably not doing this. This is still in experimental stage, but our engineers are working on these type of instruments. So they can either pluck out the weed or they can actually just spray only specifically onto that weed. So really, we need to have integrated systems where we have the climate information infrastructure that is already in place, where we can um, be scanning the crops and then we also need to be able to have the information and facilitating the groups so that everyone can benefit from it in the farmer groups together with the extension officers. And then we must have some capacity building so that the farmers can actually understand what is uh, climate smart agriculture, what crops they should be planting and how they should have an integrated system with their livestock and agroforestry. Then all of this is fed into a decision making system at a farm level and there's the monitoring and evaluation and finally we must modify something and send back some intelligent messages using the climate forecast to be able to give the instructions back to the farmers. So in conclusion we think that this is possible globally. We know that it's working in some parts. Um, the sensors are being rapidly developed and they are available for the soil and monitoring of the, of the crops and of the climate. The satellite images are available and um, a large number of them are now free. The communication tele technology is also available. And so smart irrigation systems are able to be implemented. And therefore, we know that we can use irrigated precision agriculture, and it is possible. So the message is, don't guess, it's better to measure. Thank you very much. <music>